Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yang Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Aum Shantihi 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 Shanta Sankalpa Sumanayatasyad Vita Manyur Gautamo Ma Bhimrityo Tvat Prasrishtang Ma Bhivadet Pratita Etat Prayanang Pratamang Varang Vrine Namaste. So now, death has offered Nachiketa three boons. And so he, we see the nobility of these characters, death and Nachiketa, that Nachiketa came voluntarily to the house of death. And so death is treating him as an honored guest because, as we'll see as the story unfolds, Nachiketa is also extremely noble and has a fine character. And this will become obvious from the nature of the boons. So let me read the translation and the tika, the explanation of the Sanskrit by Shankaracharya. O oh death, of the three boons, I ask this one as the first that my father Gotama may become freed from anxiety, calm of mind, freed from anger towards me, and he may recognize me and talk to me when freed by you. And here's Shankaracharya's tika. If you want to grant boons, then mrityo, O death, I pray so. Yata, as my father Gotama, Syat, may become Shanta Sankalpaha, he whose mind is freed with regard to me from the anxiety, how may my son behave after reaching death? That man is Shanta Sankalpaha, Sumana, calm of mind, and also Vitamanyuhu, free from anger, Ma'abhi, towards me. Moreover, he, Abhivadet, may talk to, ma, me, tvat prasrishtam, freed by you, sent towards home, pratitaha, getting his memory revived, that is, recognizing me thus, that very son of mine is come, trayanam, of the three boons, vrine, I ask for, pratamam, as the first boon, eta, this one, that has this purpose, that is, the satisfaction of my father. So we see here the very wonderful character of Nachiketa, that the first thing that comes to his mind when offered boons by death is the satisfaction and happiness of his father. I mean, if Nachiketa was a low-minded person, an egotistical person, maybe he would be angry at his father for cursing him. But no, he restrains his anger, and instead he has a mood of compassion. Because death can grant any boon. He is Shiva. <laughs> he is all-powerful. So anything that he offers is surely going to come true. Therefore, Nachiketa says, first, let me set right my relationship with my father. This is a wonderful, wonderful expression of a noble soul. And we should feel uh, admiration towards him. We should feel like this is something we want to emulate. 
that first of all, our parents should be satisfied with us. The parents, the mother and father are the first gurus, the first teachers. After all, they're the ones who brought the body into the world and gave us the chance to experience life. So actually the debt we owe them can never be repaid. But what we can do is that we can see to it as far as possible that they have a good spiritual existence, especially after death. That's why in Vedic culture, there's the Shraddha ceremony, which offers water and eatables to the departed ancestors. And whether this is real or literal or symbolic, it doesn't really matter. Because what does matter is the mood, the intention behind it. That I want my parents to be happy even after death, even in the spiritual form. I want them to be happy and happy with me mainly, that I have fulfilled my duty towards my parents. So this is the very first thing that springs to mind when death offers him three boons. So then, how does death reply? Let's look at the next verse. Aum. Yatha purastad bhavita pratita audala kirāru nirmat prasrishtaha sukhaṁ rātri shaitā vita manyu tvaṁ dadrishivāṁ mṛtyu mukhat pramuktam Death said, Having recognized you, Audalaki Aruni will be possessed of affection just as he had before. Seeing you freed from the jaws of death, he will get over his anger and will, with my permission, sleep happily for many a night. Yata, as the kind of affectionate feeling that your father had towards you. Purastat, before. Your father, Audalakihi. Pratitaha, having recognized you, Bhavita, will become possessed of affection in that very same way. Udalaka and Audalaki refer to the same person. And here he is Arunihi, the son of Aruna, or he bears two family names. Matpratishtaha, being permitted by me, your father, Shaita will sleep during Ratri nights, other future nights too. Sukham happily with a composed mind, and he will become Vita Manyuhu, free from anger as well. Tvam Dadrashivam, having seen you, his son, Mrityu Mukat Pramuktam, as having been freed from the jaws from the grasp of death. So, this is death's reply. And what a wonderful reply it is. In other words, everything will be set right. Your father will forget his anger. He will recognize you. He will be happy with you and pleased by your escaping the jaws of death. And he will sleep happily for many a night in the future, by my permission, he says. See, this is how we know that death is actually Shiva. Because he has control over everything. How we work, how we eat, how we sleep, even. See? For example, we know that when a person is under a heavy Saturn influence, for example, in Sadesati, or uh, during a heavy Saturn square to one of the major planets, he often has trouble sleeping. This is a very typical symptom. Well, why is that? Because the mind is not at peace. There's some anxiety, there's some desire, there's some frustration, there's some turmoil, self-contradiction in the mind. 
some tension. And so we wake up in the middle of the night because in svapna, in dreams, we are unable to resolve the tension and this results in bad dreams. But we also find that when someone worships Shiva for any reason at all, in fact, one of Shiva's names is he who kills bad dreams. And this is our experience as well. That as soon as we started worshiping Shiva and Shakti, even before that, that bad dreams went away. No more bad dreams. They're just gone. They don't happen. Huh? This is one of the minor benefits, <laughs> one of the smaller side benefits of spiritual life. But, you know, the real benefit of all the sadhana and all the worship and study and everything that we do is causeless happiness. We feel happy for no reason at all. You know, it, isn't it a, a, a fact of human nature that when we get something nice, someone praises us or compliments us or gives us a nice gift or a promotion, you know, some, some higher status or some higher uh, symbolic appellation, <laughs> a label huh? showing us to be greater or more important or whatever. We feel happiness, but that happiness has a cause. And because it's caused, it can also go away. If we lose the thing that made us happy, or if it's uh, simply a temporary feeling of enjoyment, it'll gradually wear off. Huh? Like when you get a new car or something like that. At first, it's, oh, wow, this is great. And you spend a lot of time just driving around, enjoying the car. After a while, it just becomes normal. You get used to it. Uh, or another good example is relationships. When we first get into a relationship, wow, it seems like the greatest thing ever. But then, after some time, it becomes a habit. We get used to it. It's no big deal anymore. It's just the way it is. We take it for granted. And then we become jaded. We become bored in the relationship, and maybe we start some trouble, or, you know, you know how those things go, right? So, we want to experience a form of happiness that is uncaused, that has no immediate or efficient cause, that has only the prime cause that God is satisfied with us. If God is happy, if Goddess is happy, we're happy, and there's no immediate cause. We could be in the middle of nowhere, in the forest, in the forest, or in a cave, or in the desert, or by the seashore, or anywhere, away from humans. Uh, there's nobody to give a gift, or nobody to become a new friend, or whatever. But still, we feel happiness. I remember I had a a kuti way up in the hills in Sri Lanka, and nobody ever came there. It was great. It was wonderful. Huh? I had this whole building all to myself and surrounded by forest and like that. And yeah, there was like six-foot-long lizards living in the attic, but I didn't care <laughs> because I was meditating many hours a day dealing with the consequences of a fourth path realization. And uh, I was happy without any cause, without any reason, without doing anything, huh? just sitting. Now, you know, by ordinary human reckoning, that's no reason to be happy. But what if you don't need a reason to be happy? What if our nature is to be happy? And simply by letting go of our false nature, our false identities, attachments, identifications, 
designations and so on. And but not caring about those things, possessions and symbols and words, we realize our innate happiness, our natural happiness. And this is one of the prime symptoms of self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>